my YouTube followers, thank you for tuning in for another of our Lost Building videos. This is the first installment of a two-part video about the Great Barn here at Somerset. The property that would become known as Somerset Place was first acquired by the Lake Company partners Josiah Collins I, Samuel Dickinson, and Nathaniel Allen in 1785. The Lake Company soon started purchasing, hiring out, and importing enslaved workers to clear land, dig ditches and canals, and construct the numerous structures necessary for a profitable plantation. The barn was located across Lakeshore Road from our main parking lot and was first listed in court documents related to the dissolution of the Lake Company partnership in the 1790s. An 1806 advertisement for the sale of one-third share of Lake Company property listed the barn as measuring 73 by 42 feet by four stories high and containing a rice machine and possibly the threshing machine. There are also two other barns in this area. An 1839 description of the barn comes from Edmund Ruffin's Farmer's Register in which he indicates the existence of three barns or houses for holding grain only. Two of the barns, both used to store corn, were especially large with one measuring 100 by 60 feet by three stories high. The largest barn was listed by Ruffin as 80 by 80 feet and four stories high, indicating the great barn may have been expanded since 1806. Ruffin also described how in this four-story barn, corn was shelled, fanned, and carried up by an elevator from the first to the fourth story, then measured and emptied through a large spout into a barge in the canal. After the barge was loaded, it carried the corn to a boat on the Scuppernong River. This prevented Josiah Collins from having to store a large quantity of shelled corn in bulk until a vessel had arrived. This four-story barn stood another 15 years before it was consumed by fire on September 25th, 1854. An account of this fire survives in a letter from neighboring planter Charles Lockhart Pettigrew to his wife, Jane Caroline Pettigrew. According to Pettigrew, the barn, which was exceedingly strongly and heavily built, was entirely consumed along with the carriage and wagon house. The fire started just before daybreak and within moments it was clear the building could not be saved. The barn contained 300 barrels of corn at the time and Pettigrew estimated Collins' loss to be about $5,000, which is equivalent to about $161,000 today. Pettigrew described his own enslaved workers' efforts to keep the machine house and other buildings from burning and specifically credits Josiah's fire engine and the lack of wind with preventing the fire from spreading. In one of our previous videos, Krista discusses the fire engine and the structure in which it was housed. No apparent causes were discovered for this fire, but in Jane Pettigrew's response to her husband's letter, she raises the suspicion of arson by members of the enslaved community, asking, can there be any other persons who entertain such diabolical feelings towards him, meaning towards Josiah Collins III. While there is documented evidence of resistance to Josiah's control by members of the enslaved community, there is no way to know whether enslaved persons were responsible for this fire. Jane's comment certainly does point to the common fear among members of the planter class of violent resistance and possible slave insurrections. That concludes part one of the barn video. Stay tuned for part two coming soon. Thank you so much for tuning in and please remember to subscribe if you haven't done that already and leave a comment below.